All right, guys, before today's episode, just a wee reminder that we have tickets on sale for our next Summer Life Live show at the Pavilion Theatre on Sunday, the 31st of March. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Please come. <laughs> Please come along. It's going to be great. We also have a Patreon. Yes. Yes. Over there, you can get extra content. Uh, every couple of weeks, we do an extra episode. They're always fun. Uh, there's all the live shows that we've done from Glasgow, Edinburgh, London. They're on there. Uh, and you'll get early tickets for the next ones. Yeah, right? extra episode every two weeks. And for as little as £3 a month, you can get access to all that. You can also see all of our stand-up specials. Myself, Steve and Stuart, who are all on the one camera, squeezed into this couch right now. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a very cool. sweet image. The, the video stuff. laughing us is... I was saying uh, it's like that picture Kirst took of us that we have for the pavilion. Yes, it's like that. the pavilion promo photo. Do you want to recreate it? What did you do, Steve? Did you put your hands on either of our faces no, like this? just kind of squeezed it. <laughs> Which, uh, like that. A Greek man did call us a homophobic slur for that on Instagram. Oh, my goodness. I think well, he let himself down there, that Greek Well, man. listen, guys, if you want to support That's the sick. opposite of that, uh, which is us, <laughs> uh, you can uh, sign up to the Patreon, uh, watch all our stand-up specials on the YouTube channel mm-hmm. as well, and uh, we'll hopefully see you at the pavilion. But as I do all that, guys, enjoy today's episode. Enjoy Cheers, guys. Episode, enjoy. Guys. Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was, there was just some laugh. Some laugh. Well, could. no promise in all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. She was saying when he, when he met us all the first time. I don't know what this story is, but I can only imagine it's going to reflect me well on me. Oh, Why do you think that is, Mark? I don't know, but I'm, I'm assuming because you're why I bring it up. <laughs> when, when was the first time you met me, Stuart? Uh, I met you at Tenant's Bar in uh-huh. Glasgow. Well, sure. I never met you because you walked right by me. <laughs> you didn't I was too hands. intimidated by uh, your your comedy sort of prowess. prowess. Do you know the worst thing? I went for the handshake as well. You went straight by me. I was like, no, that's what the worst. I was too intimidated by that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, probably. Uh, uh, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> and tennis bar, I used to do so many gigs in that, doing this in the basement yeah. when we started it. Yeah, it's not a... It used to be because it was a Tuesday night and you would... We, at that stage, we'd be doing Red Raw and you'd have the gig If you were life, lucky. If right. you were lucky. And then you'd double up at Tenants and just go from there right <laughs> yeah. down to like a fucking two hours. It's not a good gig. room for comedy. It's no. a horrible room. No. Bad. No. Is it actually Tenants that sponsor it or is it it's just, just called Tenants? I don't, I don't know. know. Must be connected, surely. Must be. Surely. Is it the same spelling? I, yeah. I think the cunt who started Tenants owned that bar or something or somebody in his family. So it was uh, something to do with them, but... It's a good name for a pub, to be fair. Tenants, yeah. I suppose. Go wrong. But then you're painting yourself into a corner if people don't like tenants. They might not go there. That's right. Ah, this um, is true. But they don't, they don't exclusively do that. That's why you get brew dog. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves them, yeah. yeah. Everyone They're doing, 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 doing great stuff. <laughs> All the pricks. Used to, be, used to be popular. I actually know them randomly. Do you? Do I, so I, at Stirling University, I did a five-a-side football business. And I was a... Uh, I was part of an awards night and we came runner up and Brewdog won. And, <laughs> but they were on, they were just like a double act. They weren't like an actual massive business. They were I thought you were going to say they were two aside. So <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> it was just two of them playing five. It was just two of them. And they went on and then they went to the, we all went to the regional final in London and we both got beat off a company called Beautiful Vending. <laughs> and they did the uh, hair straighteners and, and girls' toilets, and you put a pound in and then straightened your hair. Genius. Oh, yeah. Genius. Yeah, Tell folks started like, burning their face with straighteners. <laughs> yeah. So you done a, you had a five aside football uh, business? What, yeah. how, what does so, that? So it was called Fives with a Z. See what I mean? That's cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so and that, was like it to rival goals and fives. stuff? Ah, it was to it was to rival goals and Power League. Right. And uh, it done really well. And So you had your own pitch and stuff? No, so we utilised council facilities that weren't right. getting used. Right. And then we ran leagues. So we took a full-size pitch and split it up to four parks. Right. Mm. And we only ran half an hour games. Right. So you used to have like almost like eight games in an hour. Right. And then it was quite, it was good, profitable, well, good. and then sold it on. And did you? I, I sold it on when I was 24. Oh, sick. So Who did you it. sell it to? I sold it to my cousin, 
<laughs> like you were going to say goals or something no I did I sold it to my cousin and it's now worth about 5 million are you kidding no, no, no I mean, really I, I sold it for 15 grand <laughs> and, Have you got any... at, and my cousin always turns up at these events with like a Matt great suit and all that <laughs> and then I'm turning up with like my dead dad's fucking track suit on my <laughs> 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 still for the five or six <laughs> so, uh, but could well, you not have kept a stake in the business uh, I never thought I was too young like I was really young I didn't really know what Still, I was doing and then my other cousin he set up a rival so <laughs> so one of them's called Leisure Leagues and the other one's called Soccer Sixes and they like compete against each other it's like pure Scottish version of Succession or something <laughs> <as well. laughs> so I so that was uh, so I that's what I'd done when I left Stirling you know? All right. that's class did you know you used to be in I remember seeing a video of you doing all this politics stuff and all that as well. Was, what was that you were involved so in that when you were was, younger? Aye, so that was with John Boyle. That was called Tricky Business. And, right. and John Boyle was helping us to grow our five-a-side football business. Right. right. To eventually sell it on, which I did. And then I I was I was being mentored by a guy that Zoom Airlines then fucking went bust. <laughs> like, <laughs> during, during the show, his company went under and he's telling me how to sell my business I'm like, uh, yours yeah, literally yeah. fell out of the sky you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, what were you st studying I studied economics right, so yeah. I started with accounts and then I went to the treasury in London with a gap year to work with Gordon Brown and then I, I randomly and then uh, I switched like? to economics I good he's only got one eye though he's got a glass eye that's right I that's why they say took his eye off the economy because they never <laughs> oh, get <laughs> much <laughs> 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 sorry but <laughs> that brutal is falling so I, uh, I I have had a bit of a mad one so I went went to Stirling and then done two years there and then managed to get into this tra what, like one of ten students did that for six months and then get tra I, get, I get transferred to the Scottish executive at the time uh, when w w was this before or after the crash this was all well before, before that. Right. I, I was in banking when the crash happened. Well, you can't. You're part of the problem. It's just like some kind of reverse Forrest Gump situation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You've caused all these terrible things to happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Did you sell the economy to your cousin? <laughs> 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 it was worth a lot of money. He was sitting with new house like that. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what I so sort of worked across the public sector private sector mm. and then I had uh, joined the charity sector as well aye because you used to run those those gigs or so you used to do that charity stuff what, what was that again aye so I worked I set up a prison volunteer programme uh -huh. so it was a rehabilitation scheme where prisoners when they were coming to the end of their sentence they volunteered in charity shops oh right like to give something back to the community yeah but it's all changed now like prisoners can get jobs while they're on the inside Really? Aye, but so they don't need to volunteer. Do you know the what big you mean? Well, so when you're due to get released, yeah. you get released on licence, it's called, right? right? So you literally walk about with a wee bit of paper to show the police, if you get stopped, that I'm actually meant to be here, I'm not meant to be in my cell. <laughs> it's like the weirdest thing, it's got like a wee picture of them. So you get released on licence and it's trust that you'll leave the prison in the morning, go to your work placement and then come back at night. Okay. And it's to that prepare them. Brutal, like getting to go out of jail, but just to do some work yeah, then you have to go back it's better stay in the showers <laughs> <laughs> but, do you have a pub lunch at least <laughs> <laughs> well the thing is they get recalled so if you go to like McDonald's you've got to follow a specific route Oh. and a lot of them are tagged so if you go yeah. off route it alerts and then they get recalled does them do just fucking try and go for do it a, a oh runner? you'll get folk that will do a, a runner or, but it's always something like it's always like quite sad what what they've done. Like they've went to see like their daughter or their son, oh, or right. an oh, elderly yeah. parent or something. Like that. It's never very rarely does somebody just because they're gonna get out anyway in twelve months. So why yeah, would they? Yeah, I suppose why would they ruin leave it? the so, country or something? But it's ironic because uh, since like Brexit and all unskilled labour's left the country, you've got all these companies recruiting directly from prison. Really? Aye. So you don't know about it because they don't shout. The only company that shouts about it's Timpsons. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's not right. who you want cutting your key. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no. so There's only one copy ass from the line. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, that's right. laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> no, but it's it, but no. To be fair, like, Timpsons are like really good. They've got like a foundation, and aye, they're amazing. Like the guys that work there are just you've. If you ever been into a Timpsons, like the customer service is incredible. 
and I think they've got like twenty five percent of their staff's been recruited for, from prison. So that's wow. that's what I've always done because uh, when I was younger, like, uh, I nearly went down that route. Like I nearly ended up in uh, Pullman. Did you? Uh, I know the town. <laughs> like the, <laughs> when, when they stay there. Is Pullman near the? Near aye, so Pol- is it? Is that what So young Pullman? offenders prisons in Pullman. So I've done a gig there before. Aye, aye. Have you done one? I've done one there as well. Aye, aye. I, it was so weird to like because I don't know if I spoke about this on here before, but you did two gigs. So you did one a what they call protection. That's right. Which is, that is which is the pedos, <laughs> or is <laughs> them or people who are like for gangster family, anybody who would be in danger of getting fucking chipped or whatever. Right. And then you do the mainstream, and I was gutted because I went down better with the pedos. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's, <laughs> That's amazing. No, you're, like, you're all younger than me, so that makes sense. It was weird because at the time I was like, my material was like, eh, I love my parents driving and what and but they only relate to living work, with work in a call centre I'm like well they couldn't relate to him <laughs> <laughs> I was in, in his drive no, no. <laughs> but so you do you mind telling us how you nearly ended up in Pullman so I so it's a bit depressing well it's not depressing right. I think so my mum passed away when I was seven right. and uh, I just like it never hit me till I was like 10 or 11 and then I just get into the wrong crowd I was at like 12, 13 I was taking like drugs and drinking quite heavily aye. and my where dad where did you grow up again? Erlen Lufko aye right uh-huh. aye so if there's anybody listening how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but I think you, I, you and Alex Salmon the, the big aye me and Alex Salmon <laughs> aye and that old MP what was his name? Tam DL do you aye. remember him? no Tam no, DL no. for the older listeners they'll know Tam DL <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think I my dad just decided enough my sister got suspended and then expelled for school and my dad just decided that enough's enough. So he took me from where I was taking drugs and we moved to Lanarkshire. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I so that was a I that was an experience. And then I think when I when I we moved to Lanarkshire, that's when I really started actually going to school. Aye. Uh, because right. there was a lot of uh, I and then just sort of gradually built up there. Because severely like I'm severely dyslexic as well but that wasn't diagnosed till I went to university really so I really have to think what I'm saying and that's all the time and that's why like, we, we we work that we all do like in the background people don't understand the work I need to do extra to make sure that I'm actually in a good place that's yeah. so interesting because you're such you're like you're a kind of one liner comic yeah, yeah. Ex- and like so it's all about the words and the wording so yeah. do you think that because you've had to concentrate on that more is why like you've got that certain style because al- you would almost think it'd be harder to do the way you do Aye. if you're dyslexic whatever Aye. I think it's more learning so the I think the creative process is actually that's where my strong point so been really specific about the structure of jokes and changing words and punchlines and left turns and all that. But where I struggle is learning right. and processing and no saying the punchline before the setup. <laughs> uh, so I so, so that's that where, sometimes happen. Aye, uh, that's yeah. where the extra work comes in. So like if you're doing like panel show or whatever, I need to like up it. I'll maybe write and then I'll need to do more of the learning than the actual writing. Oh uh, really? Aye, uh, to know. So that's why. Like improvising shows, I don't feel I'm great on. Because uh-huh. uh, one of my the the worst thing that ever happened, and it's taught me a lesson was it. So I love Lee Mack because I think he's so well off the cuff. Uh-huh. And I done I done a radio show, uh, down in London, my first Radio Four panel show, uh, and it was there was a lot of improvisation, like there was no script given. Right. In terms of what you had to do, yeah. and first of all, because people like, probably maybe don't know, but usually when you do these types of panel shows, that you get you get some kind of brief, at least maybe a day or so before, yeah. so as that you can prepare some jokes. Because otherwise, <clears throat> it would just basically be like a podcast or something uh, where it's, uh, you're just kind of riffing. That's right. You get it and send it to your writers. And, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, don't have a, don't have a luxury. But most people do. It's usually you. That's <laughs> <funny. Exactly. laughs> aye, aye, well, aye, well, we, can, we can talk about that. But, but I think, uh, aye, for me, so I, I, do you know that way? Well, maybe you don't know. Maybe it's just me. But do you know that way when you're doing a gig or you're doing a panel show or whatever, and you in your head, you know it's not going well because yeah. you just know the audience are reacting to you. Yeah. Uh, and and I knew that. And then, of course, I got off stage and who's watching? 
Lee My Mack. performance was Lee Mack. Oh, fuck's sake. And I got off and he just, he said, oh, well, uh, I enjoyed that. And do you know that way you just know <laughs> he's been polite? And then ever, ever, since, ever since then, I've really just doubled up on making sure that uh, for any shows, like this is where this is amazing because we just turn up and talk. Uh, yeah. Like you don't have to do any prep or whatever. Apologies if you had to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, did that. you not get the brief? <laughs> no. <laughs> Never get a fee. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I think I think with that that just hit home that that's never happening again uh, in terms of just throwing myself into that situation. Mm. Yeah, and do you know those moments are good sometimes with that. See yeah. when you do have a a, a sort of spectacular failure. Or you kind of just feel embarrassed, maybe in front of somebody you admire or whatever. Mm. It does spun you on because you do just yeah. go, I'm going to fucking make yeah. sure it never happens again. Because yeah. the other option is fucking gee up. <laughs> <laughs> I, rem- I remember as well, like, we've all done it, like, we're breaking the news Aye. as well. My f- the first ever episode I'd done, I was on with Phil Jupitus. Wow. He was, like, beside me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my dad had just passed away, like, 10 days before the show. Fucking hell, man. And they were deciding... Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking, oh God, there's no way I'm cancelling this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, always, I always remember, like, them tr- they were. You need somebody else to carry that call. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it was uh, the producer was trying to sort of say, look, I don't think you should be on this show. And I'm like, ah, look, I'm doing it. Aye. I'm doing it. I'll miss the funeral. But I think, <laughs> no. So I, it was, that's sort of the key lesson for me, just to be prepared and don't yeah. let anything throw you yeah. as well. Yeah. That's interesting. You, so you mentioned obviously your dad and your mom. You're an orphan. I'm an orphan. Stuart. Well, thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> I was thirty two. Come on, not as if I was what six. I don't <laughs> think there's an age limit, is there, to to being described as an orphan? Aye, I you have to so. be in a home, a children's home. I think. Aye, don't you? you have to be. Aye, aye they wouldn't give me the meals. <laughs> <laughs> so, aye, I think. I think it's. Aye, it's interesting because everyone. Do you know that Scottish people will say to you, like, "Oh, that's terrible." You lost your parents, right? And you're thinking it's just a Scottish thing. You got every, all through my life, like friends and family have always told me how bad my life has been, and I'm like, give me a, <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so if I you're mean, telling them that story about selling the fives to your cousin, maybe I could understand. <laughs> that. that is terrible. That to is poor luck. You spoke about your your folks in a, one of your friend shows a few years ago, and um, because this is the, this was always what I was curious about because you do. Like you obviously do one liners. Like I always remember the one I always think about with you. The joke you said, uh, "Oh, my grand died in a real accident, and I feel terrible because I was the one that put up her curtains." <laughs> <laughs> but I was always like, "Is that show just going to be an hour of that?" <laughs> or like, were you, were, did, was it a case of did you have to try and get your comfort zone to talk about that sort of stuff and, Aye. and do a, be a bit more personal and that kind of thing? So the first show was the greatest hits, right? So my debut was like the greatest hits that I'd done. Uh, <laughs> And then the second... When did you start a comedy show? When did I start? Yeah. So it was 2009. Right, so right. quite a long time ago. It was 15 years ago now? I f- yeah. I, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> 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 My mouth's like, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, I did a competition. I did the Laughing Horse New Act. Right. It was called yeah. at the time. So that, that was, was your first ever my gig? My very first gig. I, right. Ian Sterling won the heat. Oh, fuck knows where he went. <laughs> <laughs> so I, my, and it, I got reviewed and it said the best opening line of a first gig ever. And it was a, uh, there was a massive green light on the stage and I walked on and I went, oh, thank fuck, Superman's no gigging. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was terrible. Aye. But obviously someday in the audience they thought it was funny. It. So, uh, but, I, but I, started in, I started in 2009. So First Fringe was Greatest Hits and then my agent at the time was like, you need to do something personal. You need to talk about something personal. And I, I persevered with it I, uh, because before... They tried to get, so they tried to really push me to go in Britain's Get Talent. Oh, really? Right. Uh, and I auditioned, but get right through. And then they said, you're going to have to talk about your mum. Really? And I was like... Oh, like as uh, like your the VT dying and sad, all that. Sad, and I was sad like, I'm no, I'm, no de- I'm no doing that. At all. Right. Uh, unless you put me through. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, the golden buzzer. I'm in the golden buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. So, uh, so I, I did the follow-up, uh, Gordon Ramsay's Karma Cafe. And that was all about uh, mum and dad passing away. And you know that we, uh, you w- I wanted to do something that I wouldn't do in the clubs. Yeah. Know? And then I realised the show was something I shouldn't have done at all. <laughs> 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 no. But it's, it's ironic because the first show 
I've, I think a lot of comedians talk about this, but the see my debut show, Aye. but I spent six years on it in terms of building up all that material mm -hmm. and everything hit like everything was great it was an hour it was great audience loved it and the the reviews were all right Aye. like three four stars whereas the the personal show the audience were a bit like no, they come up and say, "Oh, it was it wasn't what I was think expecting, but I still enjoyed it." Yeah, and you saw Lee you Mark know, at that one was. Ah, exactly. Well <laughs> 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 done, still. <laughs> brilliant. So, uh, <laughs> I saw it was it was it was weird because the critics liked it, but the audience weren't. They, and and ironically, yeah. that show formed the basis of then what's going on to be sort of. Radio show. Your, so, yeah, you, is it uh, Radio 4? Radio 4, yeah. And you've got that coming out shortly? It's in 25th of February. It's coming oh, out. nice one, eh? And what is it, like six episodes or something? It's six episodes. Stuart Mitchell Cost 11, it's called. Right. And I know that, that it's a weird title, Cost 11, because we're in like a Cost 11 crisis, but it's all about, for me... Thanks, Gordon Brown. Aye, thanks, Gordon <laughs> Brown. Exactly. He's still the Chancellor, right? No. Exactly. <laughs> but for me, it's all about... It, it talks about the cost of actually living, because when I was in when I was in banking, I made a lot of money. Right. Uh, but I was in a really dark place, mm. uh, and I gave it all up to join the charity sector and start the prison programme, because that was something... I really wanted to do in terms of giving something back that I felt I needed. Um, yeah. So so I so that's what that's what I done. But it was it was like a it was a really personal show and I was a really uh, when I first started comedy I was like not a nice person. Oh really? So that's why I walked by you by the way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I don't know. Exactly. So I found I found it really sort of tough in terms of uh, so I would. Like had a really good sports car and I'd be turning up to gigs and like the sports car and <laughs> sort of I booked my first Edinburgh run for the August when I only started in like the February. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, That's a it, mistake a few people yeah, make. It's a classic. Right. It's, and I think so it's, where did you do your first Edinburgh? Oh god, I done it in Frankenstein. No, oh, was it Frankenstein? Aye, aye, that one in uh, the, the fucking Hinkham's doing for the roof and all that. Who was in there this year? It was Bobby Davro. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't go. So I can't speak go. for the show. But. Right. No, yeah. wasn't it? It was a Jekyll and Hyde. Actually, I'm talking. Is that the same? Pub? Oh, aye, aye. oh, I. No, Jekyll that's, and Hyde. Is that the other kinda, like a longer bit? Town, I always remember you doing that in because Fern <laughs> done that with Peter Brush. I remember her doing a show right. there. I, I don't think I actually ever went to that at Jekyll and Hyde, mind you. But I remember you used doing shows there at that time. Or yeah, maybe... I don't know if they use it anymore, do they? I Fuck no, I don't know where it is, to be honest, but... Yeah. I'm sure it's Newtown, like, kind of near our stand. So. Right. Anyway, that's by the by. But I think, but I think it's, it's interesting, because I sort of get into that, what would I say, I threw everything at Edinburgh. Yeah. So, the first show, I did the, like, the courtyard, got the PR... Well, this is what I was thinking, because you were saying about stuff. the money, I would right. imagine yeah. you'd so, spent money So, I had, I had the, when I first started, uh, when I first started comedy, I was sort of just in banking and then I lost I had like all this money but see with money comes you just want more uh -huh. mm. so I was spending and spending and spending and spending and then the credit crash hurt, eh, hurt and then that was it like everything like my income just got turned off and everything just went to crap when yeah. I started and obviously that's what happens that's why you start being a comedian <laughs> <laughs> so I so I, I lost everything in terms of car eh, was on a debt arrangement scheme and just like totally floored. Wow, and then sick. split up with my long term girlfriend at the time, who's now with my best mate. So I'm, <laughs> but I, it was hard at the time, but she's happily married and I'm happily married right. and I'm no better. <laughs> so, Are you still mates with him? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> So, you, so that was your start in comedy and, and so what did you do after that when you lost your month did you just decide that you're going to just need to really kind of work work at comedy as your sort aye, of main focus aye, so it? I think obviously I lost my mum at seven so fairly young and then uh, my my dad remarried and they had a kid Alistair who's now like 25 mm. and I felt as if like it's no disrespect to them but because he was there like, that's why 
people will say I get into comedy because I wasn't really gaining a lot of attention. Yeah. So I wanted that on on stage and audiences to almost like me. Yeah. And then yeah, I was just always like see until my dad like was diagnosed and it came as a obviously a massive surprise. And then until he died, I was always just striving to get it something. And it didn't matter what was in the way, I was just going to smash right through it. Yeah. And uh, I just, now looking back, I feel as if I need to talk about it and I talk about it in the Radio 4 show. Yeah. Because it's, it's really important how I've changed. But I think I was just so, I just wanted, I wanted to get something. I wanted to be famous. I wanted to get to the top no matter who I hurt yeah. or how I got there. And it was just really a really bad place to be in, just really toxic and... Uh. Uh, yeah, just been really bitter about how they getting that, how they getting this. So just so, give you more perspective, made you reevaluate what was important aye, to you in life. Absolutely, kind of I think I think that it does that to you. Like until it really happens to you, like uh, like my dad was just like you could not get a better guy. What he done for people, uh-huh. and if he if he knew what I was like, right, he would have been really sort of pissed off, really. So uh, so I that just changed everything, and then ever since then. I've just tried to do the right thing all the time and, and done a lot of things as well that I think you do, but you just keep it to yourself because then yeah. it's more rewarding sure. as well. But I'll tell you. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I just loads of things like that and I think it's I think it's so important to do that. Was that like a gradual thing or was that like a sort of overnight thing no, that I'm was, gonna change? Or? Yeah, it was an it was an instant thing really. Uh, it was I mean, I don't want to get too weird, but I always remember <laughs> like the so because we'd had a lot of death in our family, like it's yeah. weird because you go to the Undertakers in Hamilton and he like knows you how you do. <laughs> <laughs> the usual. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> so that is brilliant. I love that. I absolutely love that. And, uh, so I, but it's funny because I was I was like that with like I was like I was like I would go in and look at the folk there and I'd be like so is he up the day is he had these breakfast sort of thing and I, <laughs> I'd go in I'd just go it was weird because but obviously the, I'll not get it like my yeah. dad had sort of terminal cancer and obviously towards the end they, they don't look the same but what they'd done like to him I was like God's sake I want you to do my break the news maker <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I mean I just went in and I like I sat for two hours and had a conversation with my dad when yeah. he never said in and back. And that was a, the real turning point for me. And I don't want to get sort of philosophical. Or, no, but there's no. certain things... That like I've, philosophy on this show. I, yeah, yeah. There's, there's certain things that's happened in my life since my dad's passed away yep. where I thought, that's meant to happen. Yeah. So, uh, like a lot of comics, I'm sure, there was, after COVID, I was probably three or four days for giving up really yeah a during covid did you say or just no after, after covid right. like so me and me and my wife we never get any financial support during covid we never get a penny you weren't paying your taxes hi exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't they getting any money for that business or something? <laughs> stop playing football you must <laughs> that was the only thing like my cousin he owned that football business and during covid they couldn't play football i was like me. <laughs> <laughs> Turn out me, you're prick. <laughs> so, but i just thought no enough's enough like we used it like during covid like we used all our savings yeah uh Everything and I and then also after my dad, so after my dad was diagnosed, I took a hiatus. Is that what you say? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I took a six months sabbatical. A sabbatical. Perhaps. I took a six months break from him. Uh, I was due to tour Australia for three months, and I got a part in Shetland BBC show. Oh, aye. Did you? And oh, my class. dad, my dad was like, "You need to, if you do one thing, I want you to do this, son." And then I was at Edin- uh, Glasgow Airport to fly to Shetland, and I got a call, but he taking a really bad turn and he died like two two days later so i had to i had to cancel that but do you know that thing like that was the best decision i ever made aye because yeah. uh, i've had a if i'd have went and if i'd have went and done that and i'd have been i'd have been devastated so so i so that was that for me was i was thinking giving up so i had to pull the tour australia had to pull shetland everything just collapsed Sick. on the comedy front yeah but at the same time, I felt as if I was there for my dad. And the other thing was that was a positive at that is I feel that so people always say, "Oh, did you grieve for your dad? Did you? Uh, did you uh, bereavement and all that?" 
And I think when my dad was diagnosed six months before he passed away, that was part of the whole bereavement process uh, yeah, for me. Yeah, totally. yeah. So when he so when he passed, I knew within myself, and a lot of people don't have that, that I couldn't have done I couldn't have done any more yeah. that I done, like gave that up, felt it was important. And and that just since my dad passed away, I just like it was just like a switch. It just clicked and I talk about it in the the, the radio show that's coming out mm -hmm. and it all falls back to I, I tell this uh, story it's very it's very strange where I so my dad used to work for Singer Sewing Machines yeah oh, it was right. in Clyde, it was in Clyde Bank Clyde, yeah. Clyde Bank that's oh, right oh wow so he had a shop uh, in Edinburgh and he used to go he used to go out to repair sewing machines yeah. in people's houses and the policy Singer was see if your machine wasn't working you'd take it back to the workshop and you'd charge them Right, you'd rip, you'd, you'd uh, just rip them. I was going to say stitch them up. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Right, sorry, that's terrible. So, that's but, a classic I, ritual. <laughs> <laughs> that's a classic. That's a, I know, that's a big material. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, oh, that's no. awful. Anyway, we're not in, but this is... This is I'd happily just say <laughs> this. <laughs> this is conversation. So... <laughs> So so I so I always remember we went to yeah oh you heard the Bathgate right films for Bathgate uh, yeah. no, yeah. I'm so, done the Regal Theatre the Regal yeah, Theatre yeah. I got I got Bathgate. heckled by Susan Boyle there once <laughs> really because she's not how you, when you do the Regal Theatre you're not actually doing theatre you do the wee the cafe, cafe. And, <laughs> and, then, and then in the main hall was like every year in Bathgate they have like. The, the wee kids for the local area come and sing a song but Susan Boyle goes over here and then she goes up the end and so I was on stairs closing this gig and he like hears I dreamed a dream I'm trying to by it and like everybody including me in that room's like I just want to go next door and like what is this is the fucking that? weirdest oh, thing I've had the worst experience with Susan Boyle alright children in need I was doing the children in need warm up and Susan Boyle was on uh -huh. and Jackie Bird was obviously hosting right. and uh, they said now and to be fair, they said, look, Susan's gonna come out <laughs> Susan's gonna come out. Uh, just don't don't talk to her because she'll be so focused and all that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and they brought Pudsy out. Uh -huh. And I said, Susan, that looks like a bit of a warm uniform. You're wearing <laughs> <laughs> but she was standing behind me with her, with her agent and I turned around and her agent was like furious. <laughs> like just stared like me. Oh god. So, uh, it's just it's just insane. Yeah. Anyway, Bathgate. Yeah, so sorry. <laughs> Bathgate. So so I always I always remember like I don't know childhood memories like stick in your mind, but yeah. like, there's always something. And we went into this woman's house because obviously my mum had passed away and my dad would have to take me sometimes on his like uh, what would I say? When he was repairing machines to go and pick them up. Mm -hmm. So we went to this old woman's house, we went in and our machine wasn't working. And as I say, rather than taking it away and charging it, my dad noticed that the needle in the machine was now, it was all all you had to do was the needle was round the wrong way. Mm, and right. he could have easily just bumped a rotten, right? I would have, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but uh, I would have at the time. Aye. If I was still in banking, I would have bumped her. <laughs> but, uh, oh, but he turned the needle in and he never charged her anything, right? And I always remember that. And then I was walking out and she gave me a fiver. Right. And I always remember that, like, and it stuck. It wasn't until years later I thought, do you know, that woman was rewarded that day. My dad was rewarded for his kindness, and I ended up with a fiver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, that's the way I should, we should all be living a life, like given, and then in the end it will all come back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you then pretend you gave your cousin the five size business for cheap. Aye, as a, exactly. As an act of yeah, come back to me. That's <laughs> 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 right. When he passes away, I'll I'll get it back. But, <laughs> but but I think that was a key. It was a key change. Yeah. And, and I got. I mean, I get. I get criticised a bit during Edinburgh because folk were like, "Oh, dead dad show. It's been done before." Yeah, and everyone I says that. I hate that like, criticism as if, as if only one person gets to have a dead dad. I, I was like, somebody's done a show about my dead dad. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss this? <laughs> I always used to say my show was, I was two for one because it was about my mum and dad. Died, so. <laughs> <laughs> but what was the moment then you're saying about like you were a couple of days away from quitting and all that and then what, what was it that, that changed for you there? In terms of it was uh, just that like a change of mindset. Just or? that, like watching like the 
the pain and hurt and misery my wife went through during COVID uh -huh. in terms of the kids entertainer she had and it was everything was on and it was off and it was on and it was off. Yeah. Uh, not getting any funding and having to we just bought a new house and having to use all our savings and I was working for track and trace to like right. make ends right. meet and yeah. it was it was it was just awful. And I just thought and and then we fell and my wife fell pregnant when we were never expect we were told we couldn't have kids oh. like absolutely that even uh, IVF wouldn't work and then by a miracle we had we, Morgan was due on the way and I thought it was that responsibility thing sure uh, so I, I was really close I was really close to just giving up and then what was your what were you what would you have done yeah. do you think if you gave up comedy We're back to being a bastard again a bastard, <laughs> a bastard, <laughs> a bastard. do you know it's a really good question I would have stayed like I would have liked to have stayed in the charity sector, eh, and doing doing something like that. I right. think or starting a business. W what it would be, I don't know, but eh, I think off the off the back of that. But then, but no, it just changed. I eh, I got a f sort of f it, it never went anywhere in the end. But uh -huh. I got a format sort of picked up and optioned, and and that was like a wee sign. And then there was just wee drips, and then again before the radio se four series. Uh, came through I was thinking again I was pitching things and it was just getting knocked back all the time yeah uh, but I know this is, is a numbers game and you just got to keep going and keep going yeah because I remember Susan Kalman like talking about it like she was pitching like 35 things yeah like a month and I was like that is nuts <laughs> like it's nuts but I something else came in and then and then it's all of a sudden I would say I'm genuinely now if people say this but genuinely now I'm probably in the happiest place I've ever been and uh, always trying to do the right thing, uh, and I so so I so it's good. So it's That's all great. downward for here. <laughs> 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 well, you mentioned your your partner, and um, obviously you mentioned that she works in kids entertainment. So because it used to be the singing kettle back uh, in the day that she was in. Uh, so it used to be the singing kettle, and then uh, as I say on stage, that there was then fun box, uh -huh. which was hilarious because <laughs> that's just a weird name for a kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I so so singing kettle and then fun box and then obviously uh, people will know from maybe seeing my comedy or other comedians that we met when I played Bible John. <laughs> that's a great story. So how yeah, did that go exactly? Because that's uh, it's quite an interesting uh, kink to have. <laughs> <laughs> so the Bible John. Uh, do you want me to tell the actual story? Aye, aye. 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 So the what happened was is absolutely true story. I was walking through Glasgow and there was people scouting to find Bible John. <laughs> Why would the you do it guy? in the street? Right? <laughs> the real guy. Aye, or... So they were so they were so they were from they were producers production company. Aye. Uh, and it Somebody was, play him just to aye, be clear, though, not aye. just the actual murderer. Aye, they're looking for who killed. <laughs> and they, they're obviously <laughs> bonus, it, 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 They get criticised for it. S, it, it. STV at the time criticised for it aye. because it wasn't a paid role at the time. It was eventually. Right. Because uh, I think they were trying to just find Bible John and do some documentary drama about him. Mm -hmm. But they were handing it pictures, and the guy was like, oh, God, do you, do you quite look like him? Would you mind? Uh, would you mind going for that? <laughs> it looks like weird, doesn't it? So, so that's I was going to say you look a wee bit like Lee Mack. <laughs> 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 right, so I went, I went for, I went for the, the, the cast. I went for the casting, and I always say like my 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 dad gen. So my dad's genuinely he get interviewed as part of the Bible John investigation. Oh really? Uh -huh. Aye. And I always joke and say, well, Dad, you get interviewed, I get the job. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how so that's how it happened. So I went for the... So did they think your dad was Bible John at the time? I think they thought like a hundred and one uh, guys were Bible John. So I, I think they thought to, everyone was Bible uh, John. I think Rab Florence was saying that right. his uncle was taken in for question uh -huh. to see if uh -huh. he was Bible John <laughs> and like his dad was just slagging fuck out him all the time like oh, here comes Bible John <laughs> <laughs> is that well, the same for your dad? It's mad well the guy that lives next door to me in Bigger he's in, he's, he's in his late 80s he was head of CID at Glasgow wow and he never dealt with the case itself uh -huh. but he obviously he knew about how big the case was and that's that's how it worked so the first time I met my wife I had to sexually assault and murder her in the scene <laughs> And I had to strangle her to death uh, and all this stuff. 
And you know, it, it was awkward. Uh, <laughs> sounds it. Yeah, it was, because they gave me a size six instead of a seven. Like. <laughs> but, uh, so that, so I done, so done all that, and then never, never saw her for six months. Uh, and then the, the, the story I tell on stage, which is absolutely true, because my wife's got a really, know how comedians' wives or partners have always got a wicked sense of humour. Like, uh, she's genuinely funnier than me. Uh, like, my wife is so funny. And uh, I was out at the rap party and I was single at the time chatting a girl up and she just leant in like this and she went, see him, he raped me. <laughs> <laughs> and then walked away. And, just, it, and then that's, and that's uh, I actually told that in my wedding speech. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. uh, which got a good, so, I, so that's how I played Bible John and it was, it was really, it was really interesting and great and I think they tried to they, they had me like chasing actresses like through the streets in Glasgow and mm -hmm. they had me they had me giving the police the heads up Aye. so police were turning up Fucking like hell. saying what is going on man and I'm like running about trying to grab just getting them as unpaid extras and all Aye. Aye. But directors so like that's a lying lassie because <laughs> <laughs> somebody got to the spa and she's like what's going on so did you see after that happened at that party did you just then go up to your new wife and we're like oh good, good so, good no, one, and then... so I just went up to her and I was like that was class like that Aye. was really, really funny and uh, so I and then we just arranged to go a, a date we, we went sort of out in Glasgow Aye. And then just had a had a date and that was it and it was weird because like after four days I told my now wife that I loved her which was weird. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because big Bible John energy. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was an intense guy. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely high. good. So it was uh, it was all right. It was mm -hmm. good and then ever since, as I say, we never thought we'd have a kid and get a two and a half year old now. I mean, I'm man. trying to fucking potty train and all that shit. <laughs> but I don't talk about Morgan and my set really because no. I feel as if you're sort of stuck as a comedian if you go up and talk about having kids and then right. somebody before you just talked about kids. Yeah, the only thing worse than a dead dad show is in a live kid show. Aye, <laughs> live in the eyes of the, the critics. Aye, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so, Stuart, well, one of the things about you as well is, is, is and this is what you you talk about on stage a lot or certainly when I first seen you was was your your finger yes and uh, fe folk might notice in that and uh, yeah. the, the story you've got about that on stage because I said I don't want to just get you doing all your material but <laughs> it's a brilliant story that you tell on stage about that but it was just what what was it that actually happened with your so losing I, your finger so I dropped them down a cyber or a drain uh -huh. at the side of the road so I had a plastic he-man sword and I dropped it in the drain and my mate Fraser Brown at the time picked it up and he let it fall in my hand. Oh my god. That's the same mate that stole your butt. Flag? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No. It's had a vendetta Aye. against you. That's what Rick stole my digits. <laughs> the other man's digits went somewhere else. <laughs> 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 that's terrible. Uh, so I so that's how it that's how it happened. And Aye. I get rushed. That but but again, uh, in 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 the show, that that caused so uh, as I say, my mum, my mum took her own life. That's how she passed away, mm -hmm. and this was part of that in terms of that accident because she always never forgave herself for that happened. Okay, because she developed like postnatal depression and all that. You should watch the show; it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that, but that's what happened. Like it triggered that again because because wow. she couldn't believe that that it, she'd allowed that to happen but it's yeah. like kids are kids like, yeah kids, kids are kids. running about yeah. and yeah. you kind of keep tabs on them I remember when I was we had like my wee, my, we were out at my mate's house and I fucking like drapped my wee sister or something she had to fucking get rushed to the hospital and split her head open and all that and now that way it could have been like so much worse and it's yeah. like but those wee things just happen and then yeah. I but you, you know and you, you can't just fucking yeah. blame Myself for that, whatever, but I always remember Stuart. No, Stuart Francis, he doesn't do comedy now. Uh -huh. uh, I supported him on his tour and he came up to me after seeing me and he went, hey, I've got I've got two. I'll do I can do that because I can't do that. He said, I've got two for you. He says, hey, Why don't you say every time you point out directions, you arrive 100 yards short? You arrive. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I'm, Can I have that? Can I have that? Brilliant. He's like, Aye, aye. So, uh, so I what was the other one? one? The other one was... I've seen uh, you use that before, uh, actually. Uh, the other one, no work. He said, <laughs> <laughs> no, he said, and don't even get me started on the dangers of tin pin bowling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do people ever, are people ever weird, weird about that? Or like, 
see, would you go up and no mention it on stage or anything? Or do you feel like you always kind of need to mention it just so as people, in case people are thinking, like if they notice or whatever, do you know what I mean? Well, you mean my fingers? Aye. Oh, I've been mentioning it for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. So I don't, I don't actually, uh, I don't do that routine on stage now. Yeah. Unless it's like a really, what would I say? Unless it's like a corporate and you're dying in your arse. I always say to folk, if I pull out the horn, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's going bad <laughs> is that a sure thing though like as soon as you do that is that everybody's Absolutely. on board so this is my that is my banker signature routine yeah so and I always, and if it's going really bad I just put my hand up and I say oh look at my losing the tips I got a manicure through Groupon <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then I say 33% off <laughs> and then if that doesn't work I'm off the stage <laughs> <laughs> no that's brilliant man so you do a lot of corporates as well I wanted to ask you a wee bit about that so, like yeah. is that your I take it that's how you make most of your money um, yeah. Do you you actively seek them out? A lot of comedians hate them, myself included. Mm. Do you thrive off them? Do you like them? Yeah, I really like this too. I think I've diversed. I would say probably in the last year and a half, I've really diversed a lot. Right. So because I wanted, I wanted my my dad was an amazing dad, but he wasn't. He, he was so because he was single parent for a long time. Working in the singer shop with with a with a nanny that supports killing all the women, women. Like killing all the women. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a task. <laughs> what I mean? So what happened to my mother? <laughs> no. So <laughs> well, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Drunk again? <laughs> 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 took her own life right? <laughs> God, I wish I'd put that in my show now uh, yeah, that's it oh. so so I, <laughs> so I think what's what's interesting is uh, so I started off sort of getting involved in corporates sort of writing material for other comics that were doing corporates yeah, right? yeah. and then off the back I guess of breaking the news and gaining a, a presence on TikTok which has been only joined less than a year ago mm -hmm. and since then I've got a huge amount of corporates I would say like I'm getting a lot of them off the back uh, of TikTok I, off the back of TikTok right. I would say and uh, any that Des Clark can today <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming in today by the way <laughs> 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 I was going to say <laughs> <laughs> I don't I know what I think he asked you to do the show he's like I've been in London I've no other chance to book him can you do it <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> but to be fair, watching the show, I did think it's going to get to the stage. It's just going to be sitting here. It's going to be my wife and my Wayne that I've died, and it's a tribute. To those <laughs> <laughs> it's like in, there was an old David Letterman, and like because he once cancelled Bill Hicks, uh, for like stand up, and the show was too mm. edgy. And then years later, David Letterman got his maw and he's like, there's an apology. You know, it's uh, like, yeah. and we we love Stuart, and I just don't know why we never booked him. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> but I think the reason I got into the the corporate space so so my dad passed away in the June and in the September I went to the World Comedy C Series in Las Vegas it's like a big writing comedy convention oh, well, right. I'd suggest it to anyone if you're interested in comedy uh, and I spent uh, maybe about a week 10 days with a it was a, a workshop it was quite an expensive workshop but it was it was good it was all late night comedy writers right really? so you spent like days with them and you went through the structure of jokes you wrote jokes for dummy stories or stories in the past and then you wrote jokes for current events yeah that were right. coming through and that was like the i would say in the 14 15 years i've done comedy that was the best I've ever invested in myself. Like yeah. Booking to go to Vegas for that. Because right. formal writing training, effectively. Aye. And the Americans, yeah. even when it comes to joke writing, like the Americans are the best at it, I think. Yeah, I mean, you just have to look at sitcoms over there yeah. in terms of the writing teams. Yeah. And that, and that's where uh, I was getting a lot of work writing for comics, doing corporates, but also writing for comics. Because there's a... A lot of comics don't like people knowing that they've got writers. Yeah. Yeah. There's very few that do. Uh, and I remember Jeff Norcott was the only one that said, I don't care. Uh -huh. Yeah. If you write for me or not. I sorry, guess it's sorry, different. Jeff. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's probably different though for doing corporates or like Aye. panel shows or whatever. Aye, as yeah. opposed to doing a fringe show yeah. or something. Yeah. Aye, you're still your stand up special yeah. or yeah. whatever. Aye, aye. Yeah. And I think and then I and then I drew back from not drew back, I still 
do it for certain individuals, but it's weird when you're watching like Mock of the Week that's no on now, but yeah. you're watching that and like other comics are doing your jokes and they're getting laughs. Yeah, that you've wrote. But what, then, how does what's that feeling like? Do you get quite jealous, or are you are you proud? Or I at, at the start I was a bit like, ah, oh, but then I thought, no, they're employing me to deliver a service. Aye. Yeah. So do you know what I mean? That that's the thing. Like you don't you don't get a cleaner in your house, and then they're getting annoyed because they're scrubbing <laughs> <just, laughs> your toilet sort of thing. You're, yeah. you're, you're employed for. Just giving more Stuart Francis's jokes for. Aye, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I think, I and then and then it just happened. Like I think. I'm, I take it really seriously so I a lot of comics will say just do your set doesn't matter if you're in a corporate situation or the club just do your set whereas I tailor my set to the room I think yeah, yeah that's like always makes a difference yeah. when you yeah. can do that you know yeah. Chop and ch- you don't do obviously don't go up there and do all new material in the yeah. room but you've got to start you've got to start with addressing the environment and this is where I think again with America and again, with the work that I do, so I do some work with CEOs that are looking for opening lines for delivering speeches oh, or yeah. delivering presentations at external companies. Uh-huh. So they might be doing, I don't know. You're just picturing like Steve Jobs or something like, thank God Spider-Man's not gigging tonight. <laughs> 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 Still works. <laughs> well, it went well with the fucking laugh, laughing kangaroo, horse. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So, so I think uh, with the corporates, it's just always been that I've just enjoyed, like people will say as well, the money's great, but they're crap. I hate it. And I think when you start saying that in your head, you turn automatically turn up to a corporate thing, oh God, oh, how's Aye. this going to go? But if you if you just turn up with a positive mindset, it will be fine. And I sometimes you just need to expect that you're a hindrance to these people's night. Yeah, you're destructing their night. Yeah, uh, <laughs> literally, they don't want to listen to you. Yeah, they would rather just catch up with their mates, especially when everything opened up again and they no yeah. saw somebody for three years. You know, yeah. so that's where yeah, I just do my thing. I do a briefing call with the client. I write specific material. I, I look at their website. I get a bit of sort of what would I say, info on certain guys in the room. Yeah. With what's been going on? Like I did uh, Lovey and Buses recently. <laughs> uh, I did their big event. At, uh, Hope you arrived on time. For yeah, that game. I, well, I know. I know. I know. I know that was some opening gag. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for them, I, I went. I actually went with some of their staff and say so what's been happening what's they implemented and all this yeah so that's what i do i do a lot of research uh on that front a bit of, like does it ever go badly when you do that kind of thing because you no know way like if you go out uh, they'll tell you oh fucking the boss he's fucking cheating on his wife and all that stuff and then you like because <laughs> because if you know too much in something Aye. that maybe it's like oh they they all make a joke about somebody Aye. But you know You're that you, if you say it in front of him, Aye. it's yeah. going to be fucked. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 but something along, do you know what I mean? Something along those lines, like you wouldn't do that because what they because what they said is so they said that the directors are never in the office on a Friday, right? And this is a real bugbear that the directors they work from home on a Friday, uh-huh. right? And then they'd also they've get they've now get AI virtual equipment for to train bus drivers. <laughs> <laughs> right? So what Imagine. they do so what they do is they obviously sit on a bus with a headset mm. and then it's quite clever. Aye. And then people come on the bus and they've got to react to like an aggressive person and all that. It's very clever instead of getting actors in to do it or whatever, right? Correct change on the mate. It's in a master. <laughs> so of course <laughs> pretend they don't see one sticking out their arm <laughs> <laughs> driving. <laughs> <laughs> Real woman. <laughs> right, that's good. Pass marks hundred percent. But I think it is. It's it's brilliant in terms of just the uh, meeting the people and and then. So I went up on stage and I I'm the listing. Like if you if you're not into comedy, the listing process is when you you sort of list things and you try and take a left turn and and I think that's what my key skill is uh-huh. in terms of writing is finding the left turn. So I knew... It's a real set-up punchline style you've set, got as well. Set-up punchline yeah. and tr- really trimming the fat off. Yeah. Uh, so I knew... So all this stuff, they'd said this, this and this. So I thought, right, they've got this AI equipment that they've got. And then the director. So I went up and said, this AI equipment's great. I said, you can put the helmet on and you can see the directors in the office on a Friday. <laughs> 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 right? And then that was like my opening line. Uh-huh. And then that as soon as you just... But then it's... 
I think you get better as well the longer you've been going. Like you're saying, what if it doesn't work? Uh-huh. I think you get better as known as a comic and a writer. A writer that'll work. Yeah. You must know something. Yeah. Like you're writing for breaking the news, and you'll be sitting there, and you'll be like, "That's working." Yeah, and you're almost excited to get it out. Absolutely. There was. Yeah. I remember there was one time. Uh, it was one of the first times I'd done it. And From it was... Chapel Apples. No, that was, that was a mad one. That was incredible. That was, I'm, I wish I'd filmed that because that, that was one of those ones where I was like, I'll just date. Do you know what that, like, basically I, I just pretended that I fucking like, was promoting a fake product and I knew that I wouldn't be able to get if I just said some actual product they wouldn't be using the BBC. And then, because... But at the time, it was because 8 out of 10 cats, there's countdown was on and they always bring on a wee hang and a lot of times the stuff that does well on that is just done, them doing something stupid. Aye. So we had this, there was a question about that and so I just thought, I'll just keep plugging that I'm trying to sell this product. <laughs> I just thought, drum chap or apple, something like that, it's just stupid. <laughs> and then there was like a call back at the end and it was like, oh, if there's yeah. one thing you couldn't live without or whatever and I've done it and <laughs> I have probably never had a better Aye. reaction than that time. It was, it that's was unbelievable. Probably, seeing the all breaking the news, that's probably the best material I've ever written. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got to thank you for that show. And do you know what was nice about it? He didn't even charge me for it. I just gave my five up. <laughs> Not at all. But, but, you know, but you know, see, you know in these shows as well. Like, but but the, the one I was actually going to say was yeah. another time, it was the guy Brian something, and he used to be the head of B- politics for BBC Scotland. Okay. And I remember as soon as I seen he was on the show, I was like, I'm just going to say, at some point, I'm just going to disagree with him about something and go... I know you're the head of blah, 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 politics and I'm just a guy that's 29 that loves my mum and dad, but here's why you're wrong, Brian. And then like I said that and it just again was just the, the fact that I just said that to him. Like, the audacity. Uh, <laughs> but, it was, uh, but it was one of those ones was as soon as I thought... And it's annoying because it's like you spend fucking a day writing actual jokes and then st- it's always stuff like that that ends up going better in the room. But, yeah. um, but no, you, do, you get more of an instinct for it, I would say, for sure. No, I, I, t- I totally agree. I think... You just, that that sort of work that I've done, as I say, in America, just honing the sort of my act. And I still, I still have a relationship where I, it's really expensive. Like, the Americans know how to charge. Yeah. But for me, you don't mind. It's like a consultant or it's part of my, in banking, you called it, or in work, you call it part of your learning and development. And yeah. for me, that's an investment in me to just keep striving to get better. Because with a kid now, like, I wouldn't say I'm taking my foot off the pedal. I'm diversifying more. Sure. So yeah. I'm not doing as many club gigs. I'm doing more corporates. Uh, more. I said I didn't like money, but I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm just uh, I diversify. Less like, charity gigs as well. Less, uh, <laughs> no, don't, no, they don't no, charge. Didn't want a night. Can stew who Raymond Mearns do next? It's <laughs> <laughs> not benefit you. <laughs> See, just to ask you, and you don't need to answer this for the way, but like, see, because you are like such a prolific writer, and I've always admired you as somebody who, who does put the work in when it comes to stuff, particularly like breaking the news and all that kind of thing. Do you get annoyed when you see comics up there that are maybe a bit more personality, attitude, with maybe weaker material? And do you ever go like, ah, fuck's sake, and if they go up and they still smash it, and then you're like, you know, because you're going, the material's not great, but sometimes people can just sell a fucking, you know, their persona kind of thing. No, I, I admire that. Yeah. So I'll, I, I I really admire that and, and watch it because I am absolutely... Do you know how people start comedy and they'll say, oh, they're a better performer than they are material? Yeah. I think I've got better material than I am performer. Yeah. Like, that's something I could, I feel I could work on because we're all looking to get better at what we do. But no, I don't. I find it fascinating because especially comics that I don't get. Yeah. And watching them, like if you go to the comedy store or whatever and you see this sort of bill and you think, oh, this will be interesting. And then they go up and storm it and you think, fair play to you. Like, I just don't, I don't see, and they probably <laughs> look at me and say, look at him getting his fucking horn out again. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Must be struggling. <laughs> 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 Too many <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that's what he usually closes on. He's going to be a long 20 minutes. <laughs> I just had to look at them a certain way. <laughs> <laughs> I do it, but it is my toy. Like, some I, people, how they 
sort of move on stage and yeah. you know, all that. It's it, it's just. But I, I think I'm what you actually because I've don't not got enough of that, and I always see myself as more of a writer, and I've got more interested in performance and stuff in the last few years. And you do admire it in our people, but sometimes I'm like. Ah, like you, you start picking up a few more pop for pop eh, for for performance. You speaking is getting worse. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, public speaking still not great. But, um, but then I've sometimes like in, I've done a lot more hosting about the last couple, of years, and then sometimes you go, ah, is this, I'm just relying on this because I'm fucking not been writing as many jokes. You know what I mean? Like it's always that balance in it. Yeah, and I think yeah. I I actually asked to be taken off a break in the news during COVID because uh didn't I needed the audience? I needed Aye. to. I needed that energy off the audience. Yeah, and it right. turned. It was more of well, it was a podcast, wasn't it? Yeah, really? sure. Yeah. And I just didn't feel it. I, there's nothing. It's one of my most favourite things to do as a live recording, unless it's improv, time Mars. <laughs> but I think in terms of a a scripted show where you can really sit and prepare for the sort of stories that are coming up because yeah. it's obviously it's been in the news that week so Aye. so there's nothing better than that is it, feeling, mo- is it more the, the writing process you like of that or is it like being there with the audience and Aye. hearing one of your jokes getting a big pop Aye. I think writing something sometimes an hour before you do it Aye. or thinking of something in the car driving into the studio yeah, yeah. or the, the venue and you think oh that's good and then actually doing it and getting such a reaction you think I just created that an hour ago yeah, and yeah. it's worked and I think it's quite nice as well that a lot of that stuff will never be seen again. I know. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, one thing I was going to ask you when you were saying about doing the like, first CEOs and all that, do people ever get in touch with you and try and get advice on like, writing like, a best man speech or anything? Or have you got anything that you could tell our audience <laughs> of like, is there any do's and don'ts? I think being it right for the environment is a good mm. shout because anytime I've seen like my mates or stuff, I'm always really impressed how good the best man speeches yeah. that are, but it's always because they're just telling stories about yeah. about them that they yeah. know and that everybody knows the character. Yeah. Have you got any or they've got it sort of pointers you can give people? <laughs> <laughs> I got it right, but that's when it's shite yeah. though, when it's the pure yeah. shite yeah. Googled yeah. jokes. Do you so know? I work for a company called Speechy. Right. So they write uh, speeches for CEOs, they write speeches for, but, but it's, fell, it's very high worth individuals, yeah. like my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so these people are you're writing him a shit <laughs> 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 <That's right. laughs> so, <laughs> so that so that's like 600 700 800 sometimes a thousand pound for sure. a speech uh-huh. for a best man speech for me so you've got father of the bride you've got groom and you've got best man speech. Yeah. Uh, the groom speech should be it's all th- it's called a thank you speech. Because you're thanking everyone in the room, basically. But you're also, for me, the groom should be setting up the best man to have as much success as possible. Sure. Because then there's nothing worse than going to a wedding where the best man speech bombs because everybody talks about it. Aye. Do you know mm, what I mean? Like, yeah. everyone talks about a wedding where the best man's bombed, and I've been at them, and you still talk about it 10 years later. Yeah. So for me... <laughs> it's like the one thing you remember, isn't it? I, like, it yeah. is. It's the one thing, it's absolutely the, the one thing you remember. But I think in a, a best man speech, that's where the, the opening line is absolutely key. Yeah. And is that, that why you always insist on getting uh, a green light? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> There you go. Do you want my horn? <laughs> I'm just picturing the best men doing that. <laughs> How much do you really want this to go with? <laughs> You're on that stank. <laughs> well, it's, ha- it's happened. I, was, I, was, I did a gig. Uh, I did a gig with Mark Nelson and the guy. It was an after dinner speaker. He got up and he done my medical form. That's prime for me. No way. Of, he done it word for word, and I stood up and I went. That's my material. Who who was to doing this? There was a an uh, after dinner speaker. Really? He'd done my medical form. Oh my god. And were I you went, gonna do that as well? Were you fucking right? Oh, <laughs> oh, fuck's it was there ready to go. And I went, That's my material in front of three hundred and fifty people at the Sheridan in Edinburgh. Wow. And he went, eh? I went, That's my material. And he went, eh, eh, eh. And then he, he done and then he come off and he says, If I'd if I was any younger, I'd have smacked you in the mouth. And I went, well, if I was any older, I'd smack you in the mouth as well. <laughs> yeah, and Mark was like, what is going on? You're stealing his material. I know. I know. <laughs> record, 
Rekordet, rekordet inte för. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> 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 but so right, so so what's the so what would you say then? Like for the best man thing? Would... Oh, I saw the best. So the, the so the key thing about a best man speech is you need to have an opening line. So you need to take in the environment of the venue that you're in, mm-hmm. and you also need to. So I I get them see the menu. Ask what the menu is. Uh, ask what the, the, the itinerary of the day is. So that when I'm putting together an opening line, I give them five or six options based on what they've got. Right. So I get information on the venue, the actual room they'll be in, what they've just eaten. Because bearing in mind, if they have the food that before, yeah. you know what they've just eaten. And it needs to be in the... It needs, you need the audience to believe that you've just said something in the moment. Yeah. yeah. So the main focus <coughs> of the best man speech... Is the opening line, uh, and then sorry, and then you just go in. You really the the whole flow of it is that you you in chronological order. You go into how you first met, yeah, and then you go into sort of moving on. You touch on the stag do, then you move on to the bride, yeah, and when you first met the bride, uh, and then you go into the lovey dovey in terms of how they'll support each other and love each other, mm-hmm. and then you end up with the toast. Yeah. And that's it. You might have a closing line, but I think at the end you want it to be quite sentimental. Sure. Uh, but there's there's so a friend show basically. Ah, <laughs> right, 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 right. Forty five minute mark. Somebody <laughs> fucking dies in the audience or something. But, th- but what you don't what you don't what you do is come across as a prick. Yes. Because as soon as the audience sniff that you're a wanker, <laughs> or you come a, or you come a, you, you've you've had it. You've absolutely had it. Yeah. Uh, so so that's that's the key thing, and you don't want it. You just don't want to offend anybody. Aye. And there's no better feeling as well. So. I mean, my wait a fucking bunch of snowflakes or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think my so my big so my my wee brother was my best man. Uh-huh. At, at Did you wedding. write his? <laughs> 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 I did actually. <laughs> uh, so we so we went we went through it because uh, he was nervous about it and he was sure. only at the time he was maybe only eighteen or something. So we went through it all and uh, he was good. He did. I didn't know that he said something along the lines of. I'm glad he, he met. Uh, I'm glad Hannah met Stuart because uh, she was uh, well, she was the only one left at one of his pals. Didn't he run off with her? <laughs> 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 so, but I think uh, it's really it's really important, and the 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 best man speech can really make a huge it can make a huge impact because if you've got a group of mates, that's another thing. Never play to the stag do. No. No, oh, well. everyone else doesn't give a fuck. Nobody yeah. gives a shit. No, like ninety five percent of the audience are sitting there thinking, "What?" And yeah. nobody wants to think about what might have gone Aye. on there, and that the, you've all got a wee secret or Aye. something like yeah. that kind of shit. I've been, yeah. to, I've been, I've been, I've uh, been. I'll not name names, but I've been to a wedding where the best man has joked about one of the stag do going out with the lassie that's marrying the groom, and I uh-huh. and the the room were just like. Fuck's sake. Like, pff, just right. totally no. gone. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. But you do a lot. The, the other thing is you do. Never you slag do, the bride as well. Never slag. Like, just don't be a dick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, so you do, you, you write the speech and then as part of the, as part of the, uh, what would I say, up service, you can have a coaching service where you go through the delivery of it. Sure, oh, like cool. Oh, no. How so much to charge for this kind of? Thing? Yeah, this is a promotion, though. Uh, uh, no, no. So this, this week we're sponsored. <laughs> by... <laughs> no, no. Mark can do drum chapel apples next. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm draw- I, I, it's a promotion. It's not a promotion because I'm I, I do it, but it's it's not really something. Uh, I'm quite lucky enough where I like to focus my time on Understood. other things. Yeah, yeah. I would rather. Genuine. I'd rather write for myself or try and pitch something than sort of forgive the fee of doing that. Aye. Because uh, it's it's better in the long term. But but if it comes in and I'm I'm free and I can squeeze it and I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. You and talking of that then. So stuff you've been doing since since COVID. You have been doing stuff on TikTok and all that. Mm. Um. So like you've been doing. Um, have you, you like? Cause you've have you been putting up a lot of your own stand up and stuff? Like that? I have seen a lot of those clips. Yeah. So you've been doing that, and obviously you've got the stuff now you do with, with Raymond Burns, who's obviously been on here. Mm-hmm. Um, the Glasgow Da stuff and all that. Mm-hmm. So what's talk to me a wee bit about what you've been doing there and how that's been going? Yeah. So I've been burning a lot of material from uh, 
original Fringe show yeah. on TikTok. So the I've best been, of one. Yeah, the boy, best of. So uh -huh. I've been chopping all that up mm -hmm. and sharing it on TikTok. And then I've been doing live shows at Blackfriars in Glasgow yeah. as well. And half of the show is interaction with the audience, which is very good for TikTok. Yeah. And then half of the, the remaining half is me testing stuff. So do you do like a break in between or something no. like that? Or? No. So I just go up and I just speak to the audience. And that takes 25, 30 minutes. Uh -huh. And then I'll just say to them, I'm going to try some new stuff. Is right. that all right? And then what I'll do is the new stuff, I'll bank. Yeah. And then uh, the next show, I'll do the same. Like I'll try some interaction chop some clips up and then the, the some of the stuff that works I might use right. and then some of it I'll bank and then from uh, the Glasgow Comedy Festival I take that stuff that I've banked to the Edinburgh Fringe mm -hmm. and then I mix the bank stuff then with the stuff that I'm retesting sure yeah. and then and how have you found it like kind of playing to your audience and like did you build is, are there people that came that followed you on like, Facebook and that sort of stuff yeah. before and then you built that again and then it's new people coming now? Everyone through TikTok. Everyone's through TikTok? Everyone through TikTok. Edinburgh Fringe is a bit different. People seeing you and breaking the news Aye. or whatever, but Blackfriars is like, I say, because I'm terrible, I, I ask the audience, I greet the audience when they're coming in Yeah. and I'll say, do you want me in my head, did you see me? Stuff like that. And like, I saw you dying in your arse in London at a radio recording. <laughs> <laughs> but it's normally, it's normally TikTok uh, that the, they all say and then, again, the Glasgow Dad stuff. Yeah, I keep saying Raymond's always like gone mental. It's Glasgow Dad. Yeah. I keep saying Glasgow Dad. <laughs> so for people who don't know, so what what is that then? So Glasgow Dad came from so me and another comedian, Raymond Mearns, who's been very good to me. He's a mentor. He's he's yeah. uh, and to, and to a lot of people in Scottish comedy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Features, I would say. Yeah, yeah, to me, so. and to me, he's uh, probably uh, he won't probably no mind me saying, but he. He probably is for me the best improviser in Scotland in Aye. terms of on stage MCing, etc. So yeah, because when you see uh, quite a few MCs who have their own stock things that they'll say time and time and again, Raymond is genuine. is just genuinely off the cuff and it's Aye. always yeah. <laughs> fucking amazing. Absolutely, and like, I, I've said this before on here, and people know obviously they've listened to his episode. It was uh, easily one of our best episodes yeah. ever, and it was just him talking for an hour basically. But <laughs> yes. uh, like sometimes you'd be backstage when he'll be telling you. Can't, it'll, be chatting halfway through and like Raymond the show's about to start and just get up and walk on stage and keep telling the story to the audience <laughs> and it works <laughs> you know how is this even possible but he's brilliant yeah so he directed my uh, Gordon Ramsay Kamikaze uh -huh. show for, for Edinburgh although he keeps telling me you never fucking delivered it right so <laughs> <laughs> that's what you want to know after a, a month of the thing <laughs> but to be fair probably didn't he because it was quite personal and but anyway, yeah. so I so we just work with each other. We meet up maybe every Thursday, every second Thursday. We we, we chat through ideas, and uh, I just said till Monday. I said, "What what if you were my dad? What if you were my dad?" <laughs> <laughs> and then he just so you get interviewed for Bible John. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I said, "What if you were my dad?" And you gave me a written, and he was like, "Fucking your dad? What the fuck do you mean?" I went, "Boom! That's it. Aye. That's exactly." So we just uh, we did a. We did a, a phone call where we filmed me asking him a question and he sort of slams me and I reply and we put them out on TikTok and it just, it done really well. Aye. And it, it blew up a bit uh, and some clips went, I guess, save, can you say viral now? Or sure. <laughs> Everything's viral online, but I think it went really well and we enjoy working with each other. And then, yeah, we just, again, through TikTok, we just started, like people were buying tickets to come and see us live yeah. and the live shows were going great. And now we launched the Glasgow Dad podcast uh, this week, last week. And yeah, it's going great so far and Brilliant. people are starting to enjoy it. So. And so, so see in the pod, do you just talk to each other in character then? Or? Yeah, so he's, so he's Glasgow Dad's Glasgow Dad, which is basically Raymond with a hat and glasses. <laughs> 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 if that's the character, <laughs> you fucking nails it. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing some Daniel Day-Lewis shit for like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I think, I know, he's like, I fucking can't say I'll take it myself, I'll put a hat and glasses on fucking. So, uh, <laughs> but no, and it, work, it works really well and, and, and I'm like a, I'm like his, I'm like his, what he believes is his woke son. Aye. So he's trying to teach me from his day what worked and I'm trying to say to him, well, it's, 
2024 now. It's no like 1970, do you know what I mean? Aye. Camden. Can't call him the swamp donkey anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Turn your Roy Chubby Brown DVD off and let's go. <laughs> but aye, so, so aye, we just, we just talk about different things and we literally just turn up and we, we talk about what what happened that week or general things and yeah, we just we just roll with it and it and it works really well and the chemistry we've got with each other off stage Aye. tends to really work in that character Absolutely. as well. So that's great. No, that's great. And I it's like you're saying about diversifying and all that mm. kind of stuff and because you you like I think if you done breaking the news more than anyone else. Yes, yeah, so I'm the longest running panelist. Yeah. So I've been, I don't know if I've done it more than anyone else in terms of, I don't, I've never, like, uh, counted I, the counted the episodes, yeah. I'll leave that to you. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've not counted the episode, but I know I'm the longest running panelist. Yeah. So what, were I, you on, like, the f- first one? Or yeah, what? I was on, I think it was either episode one or two, right. uh, but I was in the, I was on the read-through at the Glasgow stand. Oh, right. wow. So there was a read-through with me, uh, I, I'll, there's some people that have been cancelled. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, I, so, I, so, I, so, I, so, until I get cancelled, I'm the running. <laughs> Last one standing. Last one standing. <laughs> no, because that same, um, yeah, because I, I remember when I started doing it, uh, I spoke to you for a wee bit of advice just because, like, I, you've just, you're always great on those things. And, um, I, it's, I, I think it's such an interesting, so a skill set to have, like to be able to do that type of show, like a kind of panel show type thing, because it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it probably takes a certain type of a comic, I suppose. And then, but these days it's interesting how you do all that, you do the TikTok stuff, and can everybody needs to do that now, really? Like you need yeah. to find something, like something that you can use your skills that you've developed through doing live shows or whatever for for years, and then finding a way to do it. Yeah. On TikTok or on Instagram or whatever. It's interesting because uh, like people say live at the Apollo and all that sort of thing. And live at the Apollo for me, so if I ever got offered live at the Apollo, where it would be great for me mm-hmm. is to use to cut up and put on TikTok. Uh, absolutely. So that's that's the only real reason, for instance, if there's ever any TV recordings, I, of course, are good to do. But now I think having quality filmed and edited material that you can put in TikTok from a show like that yeah. can work wonders for you. I um, think that's... Absolutely. And that's, yeah. you see that with loads of folk that have done it and that's mm-hmm. the people that have done the best of folk that have managed to, to yeah. be able to do that, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing. I think what is... Why I work so well in that show, I think, is because I am known for my, my one-liners. So if you speak to the editing team, you'll say they'll say, you're an editor's dream. Because they'll say in Desi's ear, go to Stuart. Aye. And then they'll know I'll have something yeah. to wrap it all up. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. We zinger. Uh, a wee zinger. A wee high zinger. Have you got yeah. any zingers to wrap this up? With <laughs> 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 I was actually saying because we were going to start with this, but like um, in terms of like just bad gigs and all that, have you got any like, is you got any horror story gigs or anything like just the, like I can't, your kind of classic worst gig sort of story or anything like that? No, nah, I'd so. It's, too really so I had a, a really bad gig at the Edinburgh Fringe as everyone does sure I, I guess and uh, it was in the Waverley Bar uh-huh. and there was a there's a if you've been in the Waverley there's a flat screen TV yeah and a guy just went oh, I'm gonna see what's on the fucking telly <laughs> 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 and then you've got you've gone into the audience yeah, are just tough. like Pff, let's shut off and then I when I was starting out, a, a comic Patrick Rolink got me doing a gig in Wishaw and I dug a bit my ankle. You know, <laughs> <laughs> glad you came. I get, <laughs> bit, I get bit with a dog. Fucking hell. Unbelievable. Fuck's did you have did you continue the gig after that? Were you no, just... I went to get a tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reason for no day in your time, isn't it? Aye. If only there could be a few more dogs at corporates. <laughs> <laughs> Doing twenty, just give me a wee bite on the ankle at seventeen. <laughs> so no. no, listen, Stuart. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been yeah. brilliant having Cheers, you on. It's been great having Not you on. Have you got anything to plug up? You've got the Radio Four show. Yeah, so the Radio Four show is coming out on Sunday the twenty fifth. What's of it February. called? It's called it? Stuart Mitchell Cost Eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's on at seven fifteen. So the twenty fifth, Sunday the twenty fifth, Glasgow Comedy Festival. I've got my own shows 
uh, during the Glasgow Comedy Festival, so check out them. Yeah, Blackfriars as well. All Blackfriars. Nice. And then the Glasgow Da live recordings of the podcast is going to be the 17th and the 31st of March. Yeah, so that's so in, sure in the afternoon, because the 31st is when we're doing live, the Pavilion live show, so that's... Yeah. You know, you said live at the Apollo. Double. <laughs> <laughs> I was just doing it for the clips, but... <laughs> uh, but I so well, you, you know, if you want to go to that and then come and see us in, yeah, in the evening, up. then double yeah, up. But um, and that's with Raymond, obviously the the Glasgow Dar ones there. So Aye, it's me and Raymond doing character, yeah. Brilliant. Um, well, listen, Stuart, thank you so much for for joining us, mate. And uh, yeah. where can people find you find you online? Actually, quickly. Yeah, so just in TikTok, Stuart Mitchell comedy, and uh, you'll find me on there. Perfect. Great. Great stuff, Marsha. Thanks very much. No worries. Thanks, thank mate. As ever, uh, just please remember to like and subscribe. Give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and can't follow us at some laugh pod on Instagram, TikTok and Twitter and send any questions you've got to the email address which is sumlapod at gmail.com as mentioned obviously do sign up to the Patreon and we still have tickets available for Sumlap Live at the Pavilion on the 31st of March as well aside from all that guys thanks a lot for tuning in and we'll speak to you very soon cheers cheers, cheers. thank you, thank you.